The first thing we should do when writing a WebSocket server is to write the actual endpoint. So to do that, we'll add a new Java class to our code. This Java class will become the endpoint and we'll call this echo endpoint. And that class will extend the endpoint class. That's defined by the Java WebSocket API. Once we have that class in place, we can implement the methods on the class. And the one method we care about is the onOpen method. The onOpen method is called when the client opens a connection to the server. This method is pass a session object, and it's the session object that we really care about. This session object allows us to get information about the remote client, such as timeouts that have been set, such as the protocols that we're using to do the communication. It also allows us to get something called a remote endpoint that we can then use to communicate with that client. The next thing we want to think about when writing a WebSocket server is how to handle messages. We typically do that by deriving from the WebSocket message handler class. There are two versions of this class, one that handles whole messages and one that handles partial messages. The message handler class that handles whole messages has a method that gets called once when the entire message is delivered. Conversely, the message handler class that handles partial messages has a method that gets called for fragments of the message. You then build up the full message yourself. In our case, the way we're going to handle this is to provide a static class inside our echo endpoint class that will be there just to handle whole messages. And this class will look something like this. It's called message handler, and it implements the message handler dot whole we are simply going to handle string message. This is an abstract class, so we need to implement the appropriate methods. In this case, there's a single method called onMessage, and that message takes a string, and we need to process that message. In this code, the way we'll process the message is simply by sending it straight back to the client from which we received it. And to do that, we need to get a reference to the basic remote from the session handler Remember that that basic remote gives us a channel to and from the client. To do that, we'll provide a constructor on the handler class, and that constructor will take a reference to a remote endpoint. We need to add a reference to the class, to that field, and that will be our basic remote endpoint that we'll get to use. And then inside the onOpen method, we need to create an instance or the echo message handler passing it this remote endpoint. To get the remote endpoint, we reach into the session called session.basicremote. We then need to create a new message handler, and we can do that by creating a new echo message handler passing it the remote endpoint. The other requirement, however, is to attach this message handler to the session so that we can send messages back and forth. So the complete code looks like this, session.addMessageHandler passing at the remote endpoint. The last thing to do is to actually implement the message handler. That's simply the onMessage method here. Inside here, we add a try-catch block, just in case the WebSocket throws an exception. And then inside the try-catch block, simply check to make sure that we already have a remote endpoint. That's the endpoint that was passed in through the constructor. And if we do, simply call send text. And send text takes the message that we received originally and sends it back to the client. 